Hello, you join me on a glorious autumn morning, sun shining, and as much as I don't like these hypothetical questions in fishing, like, you know, which species would you fish for if you could only choose one, and if you could only choose one venue, um, really because I'd go crazy if I could only do one thing in fishing, I, I pride myself on being an all-rounder, but I did think it would be interesting to talk about bait, as the mug says, good things come to those who bait, and uh, I thought I'd talk to you about the one bay I would probably choose if I had to. And whenever I'm asked this kind of uh, daft question by an angling mate, I usually say it's a toss up between maggots and worms. Both natural baits, both proven fish catchers, uh, match winners and specimen fish catchers. Uh, but I'm going to plump for one today and explain why, and that's the humble worm. And there are several reasons uh, for this. The first being that um, worms have an amazing scent profile that fish of all species undoubtedly love. Um, I think the success of chop worm and castor as a bait combination on the match scene has proven this many times over. I've certainly won my fair share of matches on worm uh, and chopping them up creates great scent in the water which really pulls the fish into your peg and uh, down onto the deck if that's where you're fishing for them second reason would be the visual appeal of worms they're obviously a moving bait um, but you can go for a whole range of sizes with worms maggots tend to come in one two or three sizes if you're talking about normal maggots squats pinkies etc but with a worm you've got everything from a, a giant snake like lobworm to a small dendrobeda or red worm from the compost heap and uh, yeah as i said you can chop them up and, and use segments of worms so you really can have that versatility on the bank of having something it's aimed at a really big fish, like a big perch or a chub, um, right down to a tiny worm head on a, on a tough day uh, when you're just fishing for bites. Third would be the wide appeal, as I said, of, of worms. They really can catch you any fish from a small jack pike to a giant carp, right down to the smallest of gudgeon. And I, for one, just love not knowing what's going to pull the tip round next or take that float under. So that's why I love fishing with, with worms. But the last and most important reason, for me at least, is that worms are free and easy to access, making them the ultimate convenience bait in my mind, or the most effective and convenient bait. Uh, if you wake up on a lovely day like today, uh, I'm not gonna get a chance to go fishing today, but I'm gonna get some bait for a trip before long. Um, it doesn't take long in the garden, your local park, a grass verge, a compost heap, Wherever the soil, you can find worms on all but the driest of days. Uh, and on a day like today, when there's a bit of a nip in the air at, at last, it does feel like autumn today, a really effective bait that I can get hold of and take to the bank in a matter of minutes. Now, there are many ways to get worms out of the ground, and I've heard of people even using music, uh, forks, the vibrations from forks to uh, send them up to the surface. You can go out at night with a torch, try and spot the big lobs lying on uh, lawns or, or, or grass parks when, uh, when there's been a damp evening. Um, I'm lucky enough to have my own back garden, so uh, today I'm going to get them from a couple of sources. One's the lawn, and then I'll uh, try and get some out of my veg patch as well. Now, I've just got a watering can filling up with water. And the only other things I'm going to need are a bait tub to put the worms in, some fairy liquid and a bucket. Now some of you might be familiar with the old uh, washing up liquid trick. If not, you might be thinking, is he going to do some washing up or what? Um, the answer is no. I'm going to put some in the uh, water that I've just filled up. Not a lot, about the same as if you were washing up. Uh, and then I'm going to mix it by adding a bit more water. And now we're going to take our watering can with the washing up liquid onto the back lawn. We're just going to pour it all over the grass. You want as wide a spread as possible um, because we're going to fill up the watering can or use a hose pipe to get this very light, mild washing of liquid solution down into the soil. It won't do your grass any harm, or the worms any harm for that matter. So just using the hose or another 
watering can of plain old water to get that solution into the ground. And now it's a waiting game. Uh, if you've not tried this before, give it 15, 20 minutes and uh, worms will usually magically appear on the lawn. Um, but I'm not going to waste that time because I've got veg patch and at this time of the year there's nothing in it and I can have a good dig around in there and that's another good source of bait. And now I've come to the shed because all I'm going to need for that is a fork. So I've come to my raised bed, uh, not much growing in it at the moment and uh, I've filled up my bait tub with soil just to keep the worms nice and fresh and this really is teaching grannies to suck apples I know but let's see what we've got it's been nice and wet first dig you strain some big lobs like that two three just break up the soil to find the others there's four from one fork now let's keep going see what else we can get and it does of course help when you've had a bit of rain or it's a cooler time of year but uh, there's an endless supply of bait in here and I am a keen gardener so tricky to find the time for fishing and gardening but do most of my gardening during the summer, as you'd expect, and uh, still leaves plenty of time for fishing. Weekends, and once it gets to autumn like we are now, get even more time for fishing as the, the gardening work drops off. These are brilliant, brilliant baits for big fish, but anything that swims in our waters. Not many anglers are squeamish, but uh, yeah, we've got a whole spaghetti pile of worms in less than a minute. So we've already got enough for a short session really, but let's head back to the lawn and see what's appeared there. And we've got perfect worm hunting conditions because it's bright and sunny and there you can see one of the first that's been brought to the surface. It really is magic if you've not tried it before. Here we've got another one. And another. It's like picking blackberries. <laughs> and there's nothing in a splash of washing up liquid that's going to do any harm to the environment or indeed fish, but you don't want the taint, the taste on the bait. So just give them a quick wash, some clean water, and then they can go in the uh, bait tub with the rest. So there you have it, my bait of choice if I was forced to decide at gunpoint, uh, which I hope never happens because I would hate to fish with just one bait for the rest of my life. But I've spent 15 minutes in the garden, I've got a bait tub full of juicy, lively lobworms of all different uh, sizes. If you've got access to a compost heap, you'll be able to get your hands on red worms just as easily, certainly when it's damp enough. Um, but yeah, great bait if you haven't got time to get to the tackle shop. I wish I could get to the river this afternoon um, and give, give them a go, but I'll, uh, I'll keep them cool. And when I do get a chance to go, when uh, the teenagers don't need my attention and uh, the chores are done, I'll show you another video where uh, I'll try and catch a few fish with them. And of course, if you've got a favorite way of finding your worms or a bait that you couldn't live without, please leave a comment below. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your mates. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do. It really is appreciated.